I hope what they mainly remember is Germana. Uh, I'm a servant of Germana and its mission. <clears throat> Not underplaying my role, it's an important role that I've played, and Dr. Janet Gullickson will take over and perform the role, I'm sure, well. But presidency is a team sport. You don't really do anything by yourself. So there's a lot of dramatic things, the rapid enrollment growth, which is mainly factors beyond our control, the economy, demography, the decline in enrollment since the peak, which again is mainly the economy yeah. and demography. The earthquake is very dramatic. Um, but I hope what they remember are, are the student successes and the fact that more and more students are completing, even when enrollment's gone down, the number of people graduating continues to go up. I hope they'll remember that we, we went from a fairly small workforce development presence to being a real go-to place with a tremendous number of programs, a thousand percent increase in enrollment and what we offer. Again, helping more students and their families and their employers and their communities. Uh, that we have done everything we could despite some challenges to be true to our mission of being the community's college. Well, and you, ta and you take a look at the, the challenges ahead for, for the next president and beyond of, of what yeah. college costs and state funding and... Uh... Yeah, it, um, I won't miss those things. The enrollment will be a challenge because of the economy and demography. The I expect that, well, we opened up our doors in um, 1970 70% of the cost of educating a credit student came from the state. Now it's around 40. And I expect at some point it will be 20, 25%. Hmm. How are we gonna stay affordable and accessible to students when that's the case? Uh, that's going to continue to be an increasing challenge. How are we going to help more students succeed? Especially the fragile ones, the ones that don't believe they belong here, the ones, their whole family history, their whole family, their friends are saying, you don't, you don't belong there, you don't, mm -hmm. you shouldn't go. How are we going to help more of them succeed when, when those challenges, I mean, that's, the challenges won't change. They're the same challenges, they'll just, get more so probably and you've always talked about communities in our name mm -hmm. yeah we're we're not the ivory tower i don't see the ivory tower as something the university should be ashamed of i think having people able to go and do research without knowing that it will necessarily have an immediate impact is a good thing but that's not our mission. Our mission is very much to be in the community, very responsive, very quickly responsive to whatever's needed by the communities, by the students, by the businesses. Well, I've always thought that just your background of being in business and changing later in life uh, has, has made you just a unique president. Well, uh, it helps that I actually like people. I've worked for CEOs that don't really like people that much. They like plans and they like big things and buildings and big decisions and all that's important, but, but I actually like people. And um, again, it's important that you, as an individual representing the college, be real and present whether it's with the students or in the community. Mm -hmm. um, my retail business background was to some extent accidental. It wasn't what I planned on doing. I had worked for the, the family store. My parents um, had had other careers. My dad was still working and 
as a factory superintendent, but um, they, they bought a retirement business, a little record and sheet music store, and I worked there when I was at the university. And I came back from my first full-time job and my backpacking, hitchhiking trip out west and needed something to do, and writing poetry doesn't pay. Um, planned on going back to my original goal, which was higher education. And that was the plan all along. But uh, thought I would do something else for a while and took over running the family business when my parents divorced and bought into it with my time and 12 and a half years passed. I did manage to get a master's at night and start teaching part-time, but but you know, I learned an awful lot. I, I joke that that was my first master's degree from the University of Hard Knocks. Yeah. I learned uh, merchandising and marketing and sales and community and public relations and community service and um, employee relations and personnel management, taxation, bookkeeping, and probably did everything wrong at least twice. But um, it's interesting that background made it hard for me to get a full-time job in higher ed because, um, you know, how is that relatable yeah. to being a higher ed administrator? Even though I wanted to be a recruiter in marketing, most people couldn't see how it fit. Luckily, I found one that did. And then I worked in student services for an, over a decade, and when I wanted to go into academic affairs, that was a big hurdle. Uh, you've been in student services, you've never taught full-time so how can you possibly become a dean and yet I did but it took a while um, and yet all that weird background made me like the ideal candidate for a president mm -hmm. I I'd spent 10 years in student services I had spent over 10 years in academic affairs and I've been in business and of course when I got introduced in the community and there were business people in the room they were mildly impressed with the degrees and all those credentials, but when they heard I'd run a small business in a small town, they perked up. Yeah. Maybe he understands us after all. Well, vinyl's making a comeback. Maybe you can go back to... Uh... No, thanks. I did that already. I did my... I owned my own store that some people want to do in retirement. I did that at the beginning. I'm not going to do that now. Are you still to write poetry? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had some good success the last... Uh, two, three years, uh, getting a poem accepted uh, roughly a little better than once a week. And um, I think I'm I'm at least a journeyman player, if not a star in the AAA minor leagues now. Okay. I haven't been called up to the big leagues, but uh, but I'm doing okay in the minor leagues. What would you have to do to be in the big leagues? Well, you got to hit the right journals and, you know, get your name published by certain critics and certain publishers publish your book and maybe win some of the prizes and so on it's it's you know you got to market yourself but you also have to have some luck you you said about how liking people i guess one of the things you'll miss is just the people here yeah i won't miss earthquakes and budget cuts uh, and, but i will miss the students uh, miss a lot of the individual employees i'll miss the student success stories Linda and I are going to do what my predecessor, Frank, and his wife, Nancy, did, which is to pull away from everything for a year so the new president has clear ground. Uh, but at some point, we'll come back and go to commencements or things like that. So, yeah. But it, it won't quite be the same because I won't be in the middle of it. But um, I really enjoyed those events. It's seeing all the smiling faces, uh, being on stage after the ceremony when you sometimes would have four generations celebrating the yeah. first in the family to graduate from college the way I was the first. And I'm sure there are some things you'll look at. I mean, in, in your office here, there's there's a picture of the Stafford, the proposed Stafford campus, and there are a lot of things you step away from, but that continue yeah. on. Well, some of the things Frank started, I was able to take to completion. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things I was able to start and complete in my 10 years, but others are being handed off. Uh, and the Stafford, is is one of them the replacement for the locust grove building is another one the continuing effort to have more students succeed will, will always go on well it's been just an honor to work with you and uh 
have a great retirement.